So um, I will share this session, um, which is called Hubs of Transfer. And uh, I would like to invite the first speaker, uh, who is MS Kurti. Uh, I probably don't need to introduce uh, my three speakers too much, but I will just uh, quickly say that uh, MS is uh, an art historian researcher. Since 2021, she has been head of Art Pool Art Research Center and deputy director for research at the Central European Research Institute for art history, shortly Kempke. Um, previously, she lectured at Hungarian University of Fine Arts and also at Central European University. And she also worked as creator in Ludwig Museum uh, of Contemporary Arts. So MSA, welcome and uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to speak about quite a hot topic in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, especially because it has been appropriated by the writing discourses during the history. But uh, I mean about the Hungarian Hungarian relations. But uh, I'm trying to do this outside of the classical nationalist patterns when I'm going to speak about the activity of uh, an artist group, the Bosch plus Bosch, sorry to, to spell it in Hungarian, <laughs> um, from Yugoslavia and their cooperation, their cultural transfer, their networking, their sharing, uh, their, uh, their cooperation with uh, the Hungarian colleagues uh, of the new avant-garde. So according to Deleuze and Felix, uh, Real Deleuze and Felix Gattari's book, Kafka Tower, the Minor Literature, minor literature is not the literature of a minority, but rather a literature written by the minority in the language of the majority. The language is practiced by the minority contains a subversive potential, a revolution, a transitivity, an openness, a nomadism epistemized by a new language. I quote, the three characteristics of minor literature are the deterioration of language, the connection of the individual to a political immediacy, and the collective assemblage of enunciation. We might as well say that minor no longer designates specific literatures, but the revolutionary conditions for every literature within the heart of what is called great literature, quote ends. In their theory, minoritarian language uses not just a social construction among others, but also a product of interrelations between various discourses functioning at once as both a transgression and a mediation, connecting images and concepts, creating an intensive network. So adopting this concept of minor literature is a metaphor of nomadism and a kind of subversive potentiality. This paper, I would like to present a case study of the Bosch plus Bosch group as an agent of translocality between Hungary and Yugoslavia. Having members with Hungarian and Serb Croatian background, Bosch plus Bosch represented a minority whose cultural traits were not determined by minority issues or its relationship with contemporary Hungarian culture, but much more by the self-identification with the majority in Yugoslavia. Despite its minority position, its marginality and the particularities of its peripheral political cultural existence, the Bosch plus Bosch group bore the traits of Yugoslav alternative culture and therefore its role and relevance on the field of cultural transfers were also determined by these patterns. Without the dynamics and institutional structure or organization of the Yugoslav multi-ethnic culture starting from the 60s, the Bosch plus Bosch group would have remained in a self-analyzing local consciousness 
of the peripheral mode of operation. Instead, however, it undertook a role in the cultural space between Yugoslavia and Hungary that was not reduced to homogeneous ethnic, I mean Hungarian-Hungarian relationship, but opened up the experience of exchange and representation of experimental spirit between a multicultural scene and the mono-ethnic culture of Hungary. So to say a few words about the historic conditions, Vojvodina province, in the context of the Serbian state, was and still is one of the most ethnically diverse areas in the entirety of Yugoslavia, perhaps also in Europe. A total of 25 different ethnic groups can be found in Vojvodina. The phrase minority was not officially used though. The Yugoslav constitution preferring to differentiate between nations and nationalities, depending on whether a given nationality had a state of its own somewhere else. After the Second World War, the reformed Yugoslav state accepted the principle of ethnic coexistence, and as Tibor Baradi explains, gave expression to the opinion that the most dangerous enemy of communism is nationalism. Thus the regime actively tried to stigmatize anything that resembled nationalism. The self-organization of communities along ethnic lines was treated by the communist party as anathema, even if the right of minorities to speak their own languages and maintain their own distinct cultures was generally accepted. Regarding the status of Hungarian communities in Yugoslavia, a set of highly intricate connections can be discerned, the controversial relationship with Hungary, the so-called non-homeland, as uh, Otto Tolnai apostrophed among them, which led to the evolution of a contradictory yet productive internal cultural dynamics. The ability of Hungarian minority to represent its own interest was greatly compromised by a the variety of ge geopolitical and ideological factors being forced to accept a completely new institutional framework and cultural political identity established by the state. The main forum of this new minoritarian identity ready to adopt Yugoslavism was the journal We Symposium, New Symposium, serving as an important organ for left-wing left -wing intellectuals and artists often highly critical to Tito's regime. As Alpa Loshons explains, the symposiums gave expression to a wish to collectively transcend contemporary social conditions while seeking to reconcile minoritarian concerns with a broader utopian perspective, working toward, I quote, the promise of a concrete universality, quote ends. The theoretical outlook of the symposiums could not help but be universalistic, as the communist regime had methodologically eliminated the reception of all bourgeois or fascist writers, including most literary works that had formerly been part of the Hungarian literary canon. Within this disturbed continuity, this absence of prior references made possible a more, a more intimate connection of Hungarian Vojvodinian artists with contemporaneous Yugoslavian, Serb, Croat, Ruin artists, as well as allowing them to draw upon international mothers more freely. This connection from the non-homeland culture meant that Yugoslavization was not just a distancing, distancing from what formerly could be defined as Hungarian, but also the creation of a completely new artistic language that resulted in a far more international and contemporary minority culture. I cannot resist to quote here a Hungarian artist from Vojvod, uh, writer from Vojvodina, Nandor Gion, who in early 90s reflected on their situation back then. I quote, they said, all right boys, Learn do it right, you are better Hungarians than the Hungarians of Hungary. And this wasn't entirely, entirely false, 
as writers of my age in Hungary and published books once every five years then, while I wrote something new every year, and there was even money to publish it. But of course, there's, there was a twist. You are better Hungarian, and not even fully Hungarians. In fact, you are cosmopolitan geniuses, and we give you we give you money to publish the we Symposium Journal, in which you can write whatever you like. You may even trash the Russians in Hungarian. But in reality, you are cosmopolitans, you are Yugoslavs. Quote ends. So this way, the activity of Bosch plus Bosch group is inseparable, of, uh, inseparable from the specific context of Yugoslav uh, regional socialism term borrowed by, from Želimir Zilenik, and its institutional system. The group was founded in 1969, close to the Hungarian border in Subotica, by Slavko Matkovic and Balint Sombati, and later joined by Laszlo Kerekes, Laszlo Salma, Attila Czernik, and Katalin Ladik in 1973, and finally Ante Vukov in 1976. They all more or less intensively contributed to the OE Symposium, Balint Sombati as its editor from the early 70s, Katalin Ladik as a regular author and a generational representative of the new poetry around the journal, while they joined the heterogeneous intellectual circles of Novi Sad. The Youth Tribune in Novi Sad can be said to have been one of the most important centers of Serbian cultural life, where international events, exhibitions took place and besides the youth symposium, magazines like the Serbian Polia were already mentioned today several times by Jelena. Uh, mm, I lost my sentence. And also Hungarian Képes Ifjúság were edited. According to somebody, in the course of 1970 and 71, the most important link in terms of Hungarian-Yugoslav relations was Bogdanka Poznanovic, working with Biljana Tomic and Zvonko Makovic at the Fine Arts Editorial Board of the Youth Tribune. With the help of her husband, and now, uh, please help me, is his name Dejan or Dejan Poznanovic? How to spell it properly? Dejan or Dejan Poznanovic? Dejan. Dejan, thank you very much. I was fighting with this dilemma for some years, <laughs> who was translator and editor of, of the Poya, which disseminated the poetic achievements of historical avant-garde, uh, and Bogdan Poznanovic supported inter-regional collaborations, including the Bosch plus Bosch group, by providing information, connections, and joint exhibitions and publication opportunities. The visual language of the group was built on a transversal of both simultaneous multiple identities and the contemporary trends, gaining influences from the Slovenian OHO group and contemporary avant-garde poetry, mainly represented by Francis Agoricnik, and also the legacy of the Hungarian experimental poetry of Lajos Kossák. According to the conceptual matrix of Balint Sombati, also as a theoretician of the group, in case of Bosch plus Bosch, there was no common ideological platform, so to speak, into which the individual spiritual intentions could have melted. Much rather, we can observe the, the diversity of linguistic expression, despite attempts to unify these experiments within one system. In the period between 69 and 76, while they existed as a group, one can observe the polyphonic emergence of different art media and trends, like special intervention, land art, arte povera, project art, concrete poetry, conceptual art, visual semiology, new comics, male art, and a distancing from classical Anglo-American conceptual art. I quote, thus as a result of individual research, the group was characterized by a number of different semantic semiotic propositions, differing in content and form. The term mixed media would then be the most appropriate in defining these general characteristics. It's from quotation from Balint Sombati. 
As an effort to contribute to the regional and international exchange of the early 70s, Bosch plus Bosch Group started to release its own publications, the illustrated freshly designed newsletter and magazine, WOV or WOW, published in, in, in 30, 40 copies and distributed through the Mail Art Network. You will see some copies also in our exhibition in Art Post soon. Its first editors were Balint Sombati, Slavko Matkovic, and Laszlo Salma. The first issue was composed of photocopied A4 pages, but owing to Sombati's editorial efforts, later they had the possibility to have the magazine printed. For the third 1975 issue, Sombati was typing and typesetting type the text, cutting out and gluing the reproductions, the artist contacts, reports of events, and short summaries. The magazine featured a great number of artists from East, West, and Yugoslavia, from the Bosch plus Bosch members to Andre Todt, Gabor Todt, Joseph Boyce, Robert Riefeld, Riefeld, Bogdanka Poznanovic, Marina Abramovic, to name just a few. Together with the Budapest-based poet, visual artist, and a professional printer, Gabor Todt, in 1973, Sombati established an unofficial experimental art publisher, publishing house, in fact. After two publications edited together, Tot and Sombati published one in 1976, this time involving Katalin Ladik and Francis Zagorichnik as well. The assembling entitled Poetic Objects of the Urban Environment, also present in our exhibition, contains a work from each artist with a topic of semiological research into urban space. As a typical medium of the period's art, often replacing exhibitions, the assembling served collective appearances focusing on a given subject. The single issue of the alternative assembling publication Mixed Up Underground from 1972 was edited by Attila Czernik and Sombati, first targeting local, then extending the call to Yugoslav and Hungarian artists for the next call, called uh, Contactor, Contactor 1973 publication. The Abby Hoffman quotation on the heat era of the call for projects was used by somebody and his associates to make not the quite communicative and well-informed underground aware of the necessity of making their own publications. 40 copies of the works were requested and sent to the editorial office of the U Symposium in the name of somebody and Attila Czernik. The first collective personal interaction and dialogue between the group and the Hungarian progressive art scene took place in George Galante's chapel studio in Balatonboglar. Their group exhibition in 1972 was preceded by a phase of information exchange and orient orientation among the organizer personalities of the two scenes. Somebody's first visit to Budapest happened in 1971 after having contacted Laszlo Becke and Attila Chai, an artist of Surenon, an artist group that reinterpreted painting from a progressive approach. It was Chai who proposed the Bosch plus Bosch exhibition in Balaton Boglar. Jörg Galantai, who thus acquainted uh, with Sombati and invited the Voivodines art group to Balaton Boglar, started to negotiate for the permissions with the authorities. As pointed out by Edith Shashwari, the invitation attached to special permits in case of foreigners were considered especially provocative by the state power and were thus thrown upon it, to say at least, in Galante's case. Eventually, the exhibition took place between 6 and 13 August 1972, featuring Laszlo Kereker, Slavko Matkovic, Balint Salma, Balint Somba, Laszlo Salma, Balint Sombati, and an artist who was not a member of the group, Predrag Sijanin. On the flyer, the members of the Yugoslav group defined themselves as young artists of the freshest art tendencies and visual margins. The character of the multimedia exhibition was determined by the group's sense of avant-garde continuity. The entrance of the chapel housing the exhibition was adorned with a sign of Dada by Laszlo Salma, courted by a ribbon of the national colors, like a gigantic brand logo. 
The flyer of the Bosch plus Bosch was printed in a recycled invitation card to Olajos Kosciak exhibition, originally planned to open a week later, but cancelled. As far as it can be reconstructed from the images and uh, Dior Galanta's recordings, the works on display in the chapel would, could be associated with the conceptual tendencies, experimental poetry, and land art practices. One year later, in July 1973, the Yugoslav colleagues, as they were called, participated with yet another exhibition in Balaton Boglar, at which two new members of the Bosch Plus Bosch group Katalin Ladik and Attila Czernik were also represented. Yes, I, I will skip a part, I think, to, to shorten my, my, my talk. So besides the positive deception, which can be, uh, which traces can, uh, we, we can find in your Galanta's uh, diary from that time, Members of the Bosch plus Bosch group could sense the vulnerable and insecure situation of the colony of Balaton Boglar, with its impending political liquidation, which was much more limited financially, politically, and in terms of public access compared to their own possibilities. I quote Attila Czernik. The exhibition of Balaton Boglar was memorable. For us, it was absurd. Over here, you could do whatever you wanted, and meaning Yugoslav, him means in Yugoslavia, meant in Yugoslavia, and over there, they were afraid, peeping through the chapel's gate to see if the police were coming, and they shaded the windows, they talked in the dark. It was mystical and therefore unimaginable to us, that environment we were in for two days. They were afraid of everything, remember Czernik. These shortcomings were somehow, somewhat mitigated by their collaboration with Vojvodina's artists, which increased the regional presence of Hungarian artists with occasional invitations and exchange of information in addition to the exhibitions. As a consequence of their participants in the Balaton Boglar program series, Attila Czernik, being in a position of an editor of the Youth Tribune Gallery and the Journal Képes Ifjúság, invited the young Budapester artist for an exhibition in Novi Sad in 1972. In the course of the 70s, he was in correspondence with George Galantai, Peter Prutkai, George Szemadám, Gábor Tóth, Otto Mezei, István Haraszti, László Paj, József Molnárvé, Dora Maurer, László Becker, Tamás Szent Jobi, András Orvos, and Endre Tóth. For many of the invited Hungarian artists at the exhibition Novi Sad provided the first opportunity to exhibit outside the country. According to his correspondence with the artist, Attila Czernik took care of the infrastructure, the financial background of the project. He himself designed the exhibition catalog using the distinctive letters of his people poetry and translated the text of Hungarian art writer Otto Mezei's introduction into Serbian. In keeping with the two parallel trends in contemporary Hungarian art, the material in the exhibition has been drawn from the more traditionally painterly line. As you can see from these images shot by Gyuri Garantai and found in Artbus archive. Shortly after the closing of the exhibition, however, Attila Czernik approached László Becke with a plan for a concept exhibition on a similar scale at the same venue. These are, this is, I think, their first correspondence when uh, Becke was sending some material for Czerny to publish. He sent a floor plan for the available space, giving the dimensions and calculated all these details for the exhibitions. He also raised the possibility of, of slides and film projection uh, but from a financial point of view, the possibilities were limited, as previously four out of eight artists had been paid for travel and accommodation. For the concept exhibition, only two artists were offered accommodation and travel for two days, one of which was to be Becker. This point proved to be quite crucial in their relationship. 
According to the planned program, there would have been a discussion after the opening where Becker would have introduced a concept, especially the Hungarian concept and its representatives, with a project presentation as requested by Chernik. He planned to be published a catalog similar to the one of the first exhibition for which the text was also expected from Becker. In his response, Laszlo Becker was open and supportive of the idea, and it can be only assu be assumed that the exhibition ended up falling due to the debates and tensions within the Hungarian neo avant This can be deduced from Imre Bach's diplomatic letter to Attila Czernik, so he was the one who answered finally to, to, to this uh, approach. Yes, just one minute, really. As Attila Czernik explained the limits of his activity in an interview, on one hand, his extensive international correspondence was noticed by the police, and he was harassed as a result. On the, on the other hand, due to the intensity of the relationships and the excessive demands of some Hungarian colleagues, after a while, he had to distance himself from certain artists. This issue is shortly left, ref, reflected in one of the most recent publications of the specific situation of the Hungarian minority culture in Vojvodina. George Sepp argues that although there is little written evidence of this, everyday discourses on welfare in Yugoslavia were associated with a kind of welfare chauvinism. While the mutual intention of the collaboration and the need for cooperation resulted in several joint projects, information exchange and cultural sharing, the relationship between Bosch plus Bosch and the Hungarian art scene was not completely harmonious. The micro level of individual friend relations could not be independent of the distancing and resorting influence of wider social patterns, which were rooted in unequal economic conditions and degrees of freedom. Thus, by the second half of the 70s, group interactions between Bosch plus Bosch group and the Hungarian scene had become less frequent, but on the other hand, they had stabilized into friendships that had lasted for long decades. Thank you very much. <laughs>